Have you ever wondered why modern fighter jets are slower than older ones? Let's take a trip back to the early days of fighter aviation. Speed was the name of the game, the golden ticket to gaining a tactical advantage in the sky. Picture the legendary Sopwith Camel from World War I. This beast was no thoroughbred racehorse, but with its speed, it outmaneuvered opponents like a cheetah in a game of tag. It wasn't just about being fast, it was about being faster than the other guy. The faster you were, the better your chances to strike first, strike hard, and get out of there before the enemy knew what hit them. As we moved into World War II and the jet age, speed took on a whole new level of importance. But that, my friends, is a story for another time. Stay tuned for the next chapter in our high-speed history lesson. With the advent of jet propulsion, the race for speed escalated. World War II was a battlefield of innovation, and speed was a prized trophy. Aircraft like the Messerschmitt Me 262, the world's first operational jet-powered fighter, and the Lockheed P-80 Shooting Star, the United States' first successful turbojet-powered combat aircraft, broke records and shattered expectations. These magnificent machines didn't just fly, they soared, reaching unprecedented speeds and redefining the limits of aerial warfare. But the chase didn't end there. As the world entered the Korean War, the sound barrier was not just broken, it was smashed. Enter the supersonic era and its star players, the F-86 Sabre and the MiG-15. These aircraft were not just fast, they were lightning quick, capable of exceeding the speed of sound. The Sabre, known for its swept wing design, and the MiG-15, a feared adversary, brought speed into the forefront of aerial engagements. With their supersonic capabilities, they could close in on adversaries swiftly, changing the dynamics of air-to-air -air combat. High-speed dogfights became the norm, and the skies turned into a high-stakes racetrack. But speed wasn't just about the thrill of the chase or the glory of being the fastest. In this era, speed was survival. The faster a jet could fly, the less time enemy radar had to detect and track it. The quicker it could close in on a target, the less time the adversary had to react. And if it got into a tight spot, speed was its best chance at a quick escape. As we moved into the Vietnam War, this reality became even more pronounced. Speed was not just about getting there first, but also about survival. But as we'll see in our next scene, the importance of speed began to shift as technology advanced and the age of missiles dawned. The Vietnam War marked a peak in the need for speed. The F-4 Phantom II, a symbol of this era, was designed with a dual role in mind. Not only was it a high-speed interceptor, capable of reaching speeds over two times the speed of sound, but it also excelled in ground attack missions. However, speed wasn't just for offensive purposes. It became a vital survival tool, as the skies of Vietnam were increasingly filled with surface-to-air missiles, a new and lethal threat to aircraft. These SAMs, as they were known, could reach altitudes and speeds that put even the fastest fighters at risk. So in the high-stakes game of aerial warfare, speed was a vital card to play. The faster an aircraft could go, the less time enemy radar operators had to detect, track and launch their missiles. But even with this high-speed advantage, the chances of outrunning a missile in the missile age were slim. On the other hand, high top speeds were not always beneficial in dogfights, as turning tighter was easier and more efficient at lower speeds. In addition, the use of afterburners to achieve these high speeds led to a decrease in fuel efficiency and a subsequent reduction in combat radius, which is the maximum distance an aircraft can fly for a mission and return to base without refueling. As the war in Vietnam raged, a new era was dawning. The age of the missile had arrived. Advances in technology meant that fighter jets no longer had to get close to their targets to engage them. Missiles could be launched from beyond visual range, changing the rules of engagement. Now, a fighter didn't necessarily have to be faster than its adversary. It just had to be smart enough to get its missile within range first. This transition wasn't an easy one. It required a shift in tactics, training and even the design of aircraft. Speed was still important, but other factors like maneuverability, stealth and electronic warfare capabilities became increasingly crucial. 
Fighter jets were no longer just speed machines, they were now complex systems designed to outthink as well as outspeed their opponents. While raw speed remains crucial, the game changed. Today it's not just about how fast you can go, but also about how smart you can fight and understanding the real-world implications of fuel efficiency and combat radius. So, as we've seen, the evolution of fighter jet design has been a thrilling race for speed. From the early days of aviation through the jet and supersonic eras, speed was king. But with the advent of the missile age, the game changed. Today, it's not just about being the fastest in the sky, it's about balance, agility, and the smart use of advanced weaponry.